G'day viewers, welcome back to another video. This is a really short one. Uh, it is gold orientated, but it's uh, a bit different. Uh, today I'm gonna show you how to convert a computer power supply into a normal power supply that you can use for gold recovery, silver recovery, and so on. Um, if you look back at my video where I did uh, removing gold plating from laptop mouse pads, you'll see I used a power supply. Um, it was packed away when I did my last silver stripping cell. So that's why I used my battery charger, but I normally have a designated power supply for uh, a silver stripping cell. You can also use these power supplies for um, a silver cell, uh, for all kinds of things. Now, there's a lot of wires that for, uh, are useful for all kinds of other things, but for all I need, all I'd say we need would be three different colors. And I want to simplify this to you and show you that anyone can do it. Now, I know absolutely nil about electrical appliances, about how electricity works, and so on. So if I can do this, anyone can do this. Um, I'll turn the camera around and show you what I've got. Here is the power supply that I used in my mouse pad video. All the wires are neatly bundled up so they're out of the way this one here is the switch wire and all i needed for this was 12 volt so i've singled out all the other ones and i've got a wire a, a dual wire coming away with two crimp to work clamps or whatever you want to call these things so that's what i used for negative and positive for the stripping cell now there's other wires in there like um 3.3 volt and 5 volt which could be handy for silver cells and so on so what i'm going to do is give you a demonstration of what um types of power supplies there are and the color wires and so on so i'll put this aside for now i don't need to show you how to connect it all up because it's pretty self-explanatory if you know how to put crimps or solder or put clips on the wires basically you could get a power supply like this cheap and nasty doesn't need to be very old doesn't need to be very new as long as it works the downside to this style is it's only got a small fan and it's got no on off switch at the back not that that matters if you want to go and plug it in and turn it off and on at the power at the switchboard the, the wall socket but I prefer to have a switch on the back. If this is all you have, this will work. You'll see that you've got a green wire. All you need to do is connect the green wire to the black wire, to any one of the black wires. There's a whole pile of them. You only need one black wire, one green wire. What that does is it's the same as the button on the front of your tower, your computer tower, and not turn on without the green wire connected to a black wire black is your earth or your ground or whatever you want to call it so that's that style and there's this one here which has got a nice big fan help keep everything cool and it's a nicer looking unit not that it matters and the looks don't make it work but you know why not have a nice one but it's also got a switch on the back to turn this off and on uh, I find that just a little bit more useful and you don't have to keep reaching for the wall socket. If you're in the US or somewhere where they run 110 volts, you need this red switch here switched onto 110. If you're in Europe or Australia or somewhere where they have 240 volts, you need it flicked over to 240. Um, nine times out of ten, if you get a computer supply from the country you're in, it's already going to be switched over. But just in, just in case what people want to know what this is for. Now, you can see that there's a massive pile of wires here. And it doesn't need to be daunting for anyone who's confused by looking at all this. So you've got two choices. You can bundle all your yellow together all your orange together and all your red together or you can just trim away most of them and just keep a couple uh, in this case here 
There's a whole pile of wires in this nice sheath. And there's one of everything in there. There's a few of everything. So I'm going to keep those ones and chop away all the rest. I don't need them. Except the green wire, which I think is in, in, inside this housing anyway. I'm pretty sure I saw it in there. Yeah, there it is. So you can simplify things by chopping away all these other wires. Or you can just bunch them all up, put them out of the way. Which is probably the better way to go, because if you ever need another... Uh, say you're using a 12 volt supply from this, and you need another 12 volt supply later down the track, you've got more here. And same with the orange and same with the red. Now... Um, some people drill into the side of the box and they put binary posts and voltmeters and all kinds of things in there and they make a neat little unit. Um, I would only advise that if you know what you're doing because there's high voltage in here and if you touch anything in there with uh, the back of a post or a bit of floating around wire or you know, if something's too long and it touches in there on something, you could make all sorts of uh, trouble for yourself. Um, it's easier just to leave the box as designed like that. And uh, I've seen videos where people have put these inside a wooden box or a shear box and then connected their posts to that. And that's an, a better way to go. But I don't even need to worry about posts. I don't want to confuse you guys any more than you probably already are. So I'm just going to connect up the wires that I need with solder to um, some crimps and that's it. All right, so now there's a brown wire somewhere in here. I haven't got my glasses on, but I'm trying to find it through the viewfinder of the camera and that's hard to do. There's one brown wire and sometimes that brown wire may look like an orange wire with a brown stripe. Sometimes it's a solid brown wire depending on your power supply. That brown wire or orange with a brown stripe needs to go and be connected to all the orange. And what that does is it makes the, the power supply that coming through the orange a more stable supply of power. So the orange is 3.3 volts. The red is 5 volts. So you, some people who are running silver cells would like to have 5 volts. I think some like to run it a bit slower at 3.3 volts. That's why we're going to single out all the other wires. We don't need any of the other colours. Just going to have your orange, your red and your yellow. Now all the black, they can all be put together or you can have them singled out like this. As long as you've got a black and a yellow, a black and an orange, a black and a red, a black and a green. You can chop some of them away if you want to open this up and get to in here where all these wires are joined to the board you can cut half of them away in there then put it all back together so it's all neat and tidy but i find it easier just to bunch it all together cover it with insulation tape or heat shrink um, in case you ever need them down the track once you've cut them away that's it they're gone take all your plugs off you don't need the plugs um, this one had the black style plugs Keep those because they've got gold in them for gold recovery. This style here has white plugs. You don't need the white plugs either. And as far as I know, there's no gold. I've not seen any white plugs like this with gold in them. So just throw them in the trash. Okay, so I, uh, I'm not going to go and connect everything. Um, there's lots of videos on YouTube that will show that. I'm pretty sure most people understand how to put an alligator clip on a piece of wire or a spade or whatever sort of crimps you want. Basically, to make it as simple as possible for you guys, like I've said, just put all your yellows together. You can tape them all up into a bundle. Um, you can solder the ends of them all the same or you can just leave uh, some... What I'm going to do is when I build my fume hood, I'm going to run these type of fans for my exhaust. The reason why is they're only 12 volt, they're cheap to run, 
and I've got so many of them. There's an endless supply. I get so many computers given to me, and I've got about 10 of these boxes in my cupboard. So if I ever need a power supply, if this one packs it in, I've got another one. Big fans like this would be perfect for my ventilation in my fume hood. So I'm going to have one yellow, yellow wire with black running to my fans because they're 12 volt. I'm going to have another black, another yellow wire with black running for a sulfuric stripping cell. And I'm going to run a red wire and black for my silver cell. Um, I'm going to bunch the rest of them up, stash them aside, and just tape them to the box if you wanted to, get them out of the way. So that you're just running a nice, neat bunch like this would be so much easier. And just don't forget, you need the green wire, which I'm pretty sure is in here. And the green wire with one black. That's all you need. The machine will not turn on without that green wire connected to a black. Black is, I'm pretty sure some people say earth. Some people say ground. So, okay. Uh, I hope that helps. Uh, for some of the people who have wondered how to get a power supply happening and yeah, if you're not sure I'll put a link in the description to a particular video that I found very useful in, in how to set up a, a supply but I don't think you need it I'll just put it there in case alright guys thanks for watching I hope this is informative and uh, before I go See if you can get uh, a hammer like this. In Australia, we call this a gimpy. It's very, very heavy. Grab one of these and smash that subscribe button because I need all the help I can get. And I'll leave you with a thought of the day for people who like brain cheeses and so on. There are three types of people in the world. Three. Count them. One, two, three. Three types of people in the world. Those who can count and those who can't. All right, guys, catch you on the next video. Bye.